Hi there, welcome. My name is Dana Damara. You have landed on AstroCast. I wanna thank you so much for being here. Those of you who listen in every week, every two weeks actually, and those of you who are brand new. So in this little forecast, podcast, AstroCast, whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the full moon coming up. And I'm gonna go through some of the aspects with the full moon that we have coming up. This is a big one. So I really want you to be ready to hear this one because uh, as we all know, there is always opposition. There's a dark and a light to everything. So I want you to hear all of it. Um, and the other thing is, is those of you who are in Encinitas or in the surrounding vicinity, I will be hosting a full moon circle at Alila, the sound bath, uh, two days before the full moon. So it's October 18th. And uh, we do that just because that's when the space is available. And uh, we will be partially outside, partially inside um, as best as we can away from any noise and uh, trying to keep you nice and comfy. So I think there's a few spots left if you wanna join us. So uh, you can go to my website for that. Okay, oh my God, full moon on uh, Thursday, October 20th, uh, big fat full moon, full moon in Aries. Okay, so the sun's in Libra, which puts the moon in Aries. Uh, we have Mars sitting right next to the sun. And we have Pluto making a square to both uh, the sun and the moon and Mars. So <laughs> it's kind of an intense, I think, I think if I had to sum up this entire um, forecast, it would be intensity. <laughs> um, here's the thing. The word intensity is kind of given a bad rap as is tension um, or stress. And I know stress, medically speaking, uh, isn't always good. However, intensity, stress, and tension will um, push you to making a change. And sometimes that's what we need to make change, right? We're like, la, 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 walking around in life, it's okay, ignore, 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 and that's great. But sometimes it takes a little bit of intensity to kind of create that constriction we need uh, in order to um, give birth to what's new. It's kind of like a contraction in um, pregnancy, right? You have a contraction, you can't have birth without a contraction. You just can't, won't happen. Well, most times. Anyways, it's another story. Um, but this full moon is really all about the intensity of what's coming up. So I wanna show you on my screen what it looks like because I like to do that. Um, I find I'm a visual learner, so I find that it makes it easier for me too to understand. So you see all those red lines, that means intensity. <laughs> Let me just go through it with you. It's full moon, October, October 20th. That's my sister's birthday. It's her, well, I'm just going to say it. She's 50. So happy birthday, sweet Amy. Um, 7.56 a.m., 7.57 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time here in Southern California. Um, here's the moon, 27 degrees. First of all, uh, two plus seven is nine, new beginnings. Second of all, Aries, first sign of the zodiac wheel, new beginnings. So we have this energy of new beginnings, right? At the same time, right across from the moon, you have uh, Mars and the sun. Mars is sitting right next to the sun. You can see that it's pretty clear uh, within three degrees. So that is enough to call it a conjunction. A con when planets are conjunct each other, they actually kind of rub up against each other and um, for lack of a better word, co-mingle their powers. And Mars is all about initiation. Mars is passion. Mars is the masculine. Mars is movement forward. Mars is all about um, you know, what's next, the initiator. Um, Mars, Mars is also aggression. And since it's sitting there with the sun, it will illuminate all of that. So I'm gonna talk about that in a second. The other thing, if you just kind of look down here at this little combobulation, we have uh, Pluto, Pluto at 25 degrees or 24 degrees. Uh, so it is almost an exact square to, Pluto, uh, to Mars and uh, close enough to count it as a square to the moon and the sun. So we have this, <sighs> Well, for lack of a better word, you guys, it's intense. I mean, it's just intense. First of all, Mars rules Aries and it's opposite the moon. It's at 27 degrees, so it's new beginning. So this is setting up tension that's gonna be, need to be resolved. And 
I, I'm going to talk about this uh, as I get into this, but basically what we're doing is Pluto is in this position to set up for the big event of 2022, which is Pluto return. Okay, so this is like global Pluto return. It'll be the first time that Pluto uh, has been uh, in its original position since 1776. So Pluto, you know, you know, when the sun returns, the sun goes around at your birthday, right? And then we have like a Saturn return. Everybody knows about a Saturn return. We have a Chiron return. So we have these planets that hit our chart at certain times. Well, Pluto hasn't been in this spot since 1776. So we're gonna have this big energy in February of 2022. And right now it's almost like the, mm, okay, here we go position. <laughs> so the intensity that you may or may not feel um, at this time is setting up for that big release. So full moon opposite Mars, we've got the moon opposite Mars. What that's gonna create is, remember we have a dark and a light, okay? So it's gonna create a sense of um, moving toward your passionate desires, like what you want, what you desire. This is like, really like I'm feeling it. I wanna go, 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 right? Um, but, it can also mean that you're gonna get a little impulsive or potentially impulsive. Um, you could get a little hostile, a little ornery, a little annoyed with maybe how everything is moving too slow for you. Impatient is another word. So what I would say is, um, and this, I'm gonna, you're probably gonna hear me repeat this. Um, with this type of, you know, moon opposite Mars, which is right here, you're going to want to guard against any type of um, anger or aggression. So if you start to feel yourself feeling that way, first of all, remember that everything is in divine order. It's going to happen when it's going to happen. Channel that energy in a way that is positive for yourself. Just channel it in a way that's positive. Don't, don't try to push the river, so to speak. Um, you know, and, and it's going to be, it could be challenging because Aries is wanting that momentum too. Aries is like, come on, come on, let's go. It's the first sign of Zodiac wheel. But I, I'm telling you, it, Mars is a big player in this full moon. And Mars is like kind of trying to stir the pot for lack of a better phrase. Like Mars is like, come on guys, let's all like get frustrated and want to push forward. Don't, don't, listen to Mars uh, too much. Use that Mars energy um, in, in a way that it will support you and where you want to go, but you won't bulldoze people over uh, or burn bridges um, as you go forward. My mom always taught me that. Don't burn a bridge, you know. I think I did okay. Maybe a couple burning out there. Um, Sun conjunct Mars is really about unleashing your, uh, unleashing your imagination. So it's about illuminating your passions, illuminating what you desire, illuminating those parts of yourself that are actually wanting to feel power. Maybe you've been kind of sitting on your butt for, you know, a couple months on an idea or something, right? So this, this energy is going to be like, hey, it's time to go. It's time to do this. Just remember, don't, don't plow people over as you get there, but listen to your instinct, like really listen to your guides and ask like, what is it? What is it? What is it? Because it's all unfolding right now, but you don't need to push. You really don't need to push. I know it's going to feel that way, but you won't. Um, so we've got a, a square, actually Pluto, freaking Pluto. Pluto's getting a little honor here. We've got it squaring um, the moon and um, Mars and the sun. So Full moon squaring Pluto can also lead to that same type of like destructive um, behavior and create um, power struggles for yourself or for other, you know, between other people or even within your own self, you know, that, that shows up as like, I should be doing that or I should be doing this and then you don't get anything done, right? Um, you know, watch out for the monkey mind, watch out for um, ways that you're trying to control other people or control a situation like that's Pluto. Pluto is about control, but Pluto is also about transformation and Pluto wants you to transform. Pluto wants you to move in a direction that is in alignment with your soul. And so maybe, you know, you've been in alignment all along and that's great. 
um, maybe you're like off the Richter. <laughs> um, I don't want to say neither one of those things matter, but what matters is that um, the intensity in which you apply yourself with, with that extreme intense connection to spirit will predict your outcome. So stay in alignment with that intense uh, guiding force and listen deeply. Don't, now is not the time to get distracted about anything. It's, it's really not. Um, and, and I, I want to say too, that, you know, it, like I said, on February 20th, 2022, you know, we're actually moving toward a major upgrade on planet earth. I mean, I said it back in January of 2020, I, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew it was going to be big. Um, when uh, we had that great conjunction, you know, and I was like, it's a fucking Pluto and Jupiter and Saturn all sitting together, like something is gonna happen and bam, something happened. So with Pluto um, moving into that space, there, there's going to be a shift on the planet. And let's just think about this for a moment. If Pluto is all about inner transformation and purging and letting go and looking at like, Whenever I say the darker sides, people may take that as negative, but just those darker sides of shadio, shady, shadio, <laughs> shadowy sides to yourself or to like maybe the way you function in certain relationships, you know, just take a little look at some of those things because, and, and this is the phrase that came out when I was writing this out, own your stuff and start doing that now because when February, 2022 comes, it'll be a, a moment of empowerment when Pluto moves. And so I want you to like really be in the best alignment that you can. So example would be like, a, a, you know, know your triggers, know what triggers you. Um, maybe what one of the tapes that plays in your head is, right? Um, and, and start to kind of figure out how to get rid of that because it's not gonna work well when Pluto um, finds its way back to where it started from. And Mars is square Pluto, so I'll show, I'll sh I don't know what's going on with my shushing. I will share my screen with you right now. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, they said, why don't you edit these videos? I'm like, because I don't want to, this is who I am. Um, uh, so Pluto's down here, see, and it's, really creating so much, just so much for damn Pluto. Um, uh, but Mars is, is firing up Pluto. Mars is like, come on, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Like, let's get them to transform. Let's bring on the, you know, the power struggles. How dare you let them treat you that way? Like that sort of thing, right? And so, you don't want to ever be the victim in those types of situations. You don't want to be the, like, how could they treat me that way? Or how, why is this happening to me? Instead, you know, really um, know where you're going, know what your intention is, know what your gift is. Don't take that gift for granted. Know what your gift is, offer it up. Know who your players are, know who your manipulators are and just kind of stay in your lane, using your power for your inner transformation. So this is really a time of like being mindful about who's in your circle, who's not in your circle, who's still on the outskirts and can just stay there. Um, what's triggering for you and find a safe space to allow those triggers to, um, cease to exist or at least move through them so you understand them. Gosh, I hope that makes sense. I'm not really sure how else to explain Mars square and Pluto. Um, I just want you to be aware of any habits that you have, again, and own your stuff. Uh, be aware of any habits that you have that, you know, maybe are creating angst in your relationships or aren't giving you what you're looking for in life, you know. Well, you know, it's because of the pandemic. That's why this, that, and the other. No, it's not. It's, you can't blame stuff on things outside of you. You can for a minute, but what I want you to do is 
um, recognize when you're blaming something on the outside and just own it, figure out how to own it. Um, and that's how you transform things. That's how you transform um, everything really is to just kind of take accountability. And then there's nobody taking your power away from you. There isn't any kind of outside influence that um, you have wrested your power with and said, well, because of this, well now, you know, because of him or because of her, or because of this situation or that president or this, no. The answer is N-O. It's just an outside influence, but you get to choose what you're going to tune into and what you're going to pay attention to. That's the most important bit in all this because, and, and think of it this way, you get to choose how you define the word intensity or intense. Because I'll just tell you right now, I'll just be really honest. For years, I had people tell me, you're just so intimidating. You're just so intense. Okay, no, I'm not intimidating. You're intimidated, <laughs> you know? I'm not intense. I just feel things deeper, right? But damn, it took me a long time to actually see that and feel that. And so the, what do we do with that? We then dim ourselves, right? Instead, channel that definition of what intensity looks like to you and use it to your advantage. Use that idea of tension. Maybe you're having a situation that you feel really tense about right now in, a, in an intimate, close relationship with someone. Instead of being like, ah, you know, oh, gosh, this is really challenging right now. I'm feeling a sense of tension. Let's just talk about what is creating that tension. Now, I'm very well aware that if it is a relationship, you have to have two people that are um, coexisting, but you don't need two people to understand your part, right? Um, so that's, that's this moon, right? And so I'm just going to share my screen one more time. So with Pluto sitting here, and then with the moon sitting here, and then the sun and Mars sitting here, we have an extremely tense situation, <laughs> extremely tense situation. We also have um, an in conjunction with Uranus, which is the planet of change over here with Venus, which is about love, value, finance, money, that sort of thing. And also Mercury, which is communication. So, you know, a couple of things. Um, you can take notes if this makes sense. But uh, first, let me say this. This is a this is what happens. I'll go back to the very first thing I said in the beginning, which is like before any type of birth, we have contractions, right? And those, any of you who have given birth, you know, those contractions hurt like a son of a gun. Like nothing feels like that. Nothing. You can't even explain it. But you have to go through that in order to, to birth a human into the world. Okay. And I don't want to discuss, well, but you know, just like, let's just use that as an example, okay? And then once you go through that, you kind of forget what the contraction feels like. You're like, oh, oh yeah, that did hurt. That was really, but I can't really explain it right now because now look at what I have. This is amazing. Even when they turn 18 and they don't want to talk to you, you still love them. You still feel that same sense of feeling, right? This is where we're at on the planet, right? So we have these new beginnings with Aries and Libra, they're cardinal signs, four planets stationing direct. I'm getting excited now, four planets stationing direct, four of them, okay? So all these four planets are moving from retrograde to uh, direct, which means they're, um, they're, some of them may even be still, right? So we're being asked to move forward We've had all this time with these planets in retrograde, work out your stuff, work out your stuff. Now Pluto's gonna go, work out your stuff. Go to therapy, <laughs> whatever it is, right? And just own it and move through it because you want your vibration to be at a higher level. You don't wanna get snagged by those old things that used to upset you. You wanna be able to look at an argument that you're having with someone and be like, hey, this is old. This is old. I don't. 
I don't want to have this argument anymore. Do you? Let's try to figure out what it is that's happening in this cauldron between us and let's move through it. Right. And again, if the, if the other person is unwilling, then you just know what your stuff is because it's only your lane anyways. It's only your side of the street. But I want you to, to think about that. And I want you to think about owning your power, not in like a ruthless, you know, strong handed way, but just own your power like the goddess. She just stands. She doesn't even have to do anything. She just stands and, you know, mountains move, right? So rad to think about that. Um, be ready for new beginnings. Um, use your voice. So use that voice that comes up when you want to say something, when you feel something. Ground your feet, feel empowered. Know that there's intensity. So what needs to happen? Breath, connection to God, connection to source, connection to love, connection to earth. So the world can be spinning around you. People can be like, ah, and you're just like, okay, I'm good. I'm feeling intense. Yes, I can feel the intensity. And when you feel that, what do you need to do to move through it? Run, surf, ride your bike, get in nature, get in nature, get in nature, get in nature. <laughs> Sweat, cry, cold plunge, whatever you need to do to move that energy out, okay? Ground, open up the heart, connect to God, do the things that move that angsty energy, right? Ask yourself a few questions. These are really good questions, okay? I'm even gonna use them in my journaling. Ask yourself, how am I showing up in this relationship, in this whatever, this way, with this person, this job, this whatever? How am I showing up? Look at the places where you're showing up that create power struggle for people. Just gonna put that out there. Um, ask yourself, where and why are you trying to control that person or that outcome in your life? You have no control. But ask yourself, where and why am I trying to control this person? Because Pluto is about control. Pluto wants control. Moves so damn slow through the universe. Um, and deal with your old emotions. Like when you dig up that bit, which you've probably been like digging up for a while, instead of like going into the past and, and like blaming mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, ancestral lines, coaches, teachers, whatever, blaming the trauma that happened to you. Just deal with the emotion in the present freaking moment. This is the emotion that's happening to me right now. I believe I know where it came from. I'm ready to move through it and be done. I'm not going to have this argument anymore because it no longer sits in my body. That's, that's the energy of this full moon. And so it's intense. It's intense. It's intimidating, but that means you're just intimidated. So um, the sound bowls will be perfect on the full moon. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find the right microphone where I can play the bowls and be able to stream, but I haven't found it yet. So as soon as I do, wish me luck. I ordered two microphones, so I should be getting them soon. But um, you know, just do the things that calm the mind. Um, if you need to lean into that intensity because you've always been shying away, lean in. If you've been pushing, lay back, move your body, scream, holler, dance, sing, whatever, get it out. I just signed up for like two hot yoga classes, boot camp and Pilates for next week. I'm like, I am not even going to let this be a space where I'm not moving. So do that. I hope this helps. Um, if you want your chart read, because you want to see where all this lands for you personally, because it is different, right? Like I'm just giving you a general overview. Um, but if you're noticing something going on in your life and you're like, holy crap, I wonder how this is heading my chart. Uh, you can schedule a call with me and I would love to read your chart. It's always nice to know um, what's going on in relation to you. Um, 
Because some of you may be like, I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Intense. I don't know what she's talking about. Um, and that's because it's not hitting your chart. And so don't go looking for things. <laughs> don't go looking for things if it's not intense. Just let, let everybody else whirl around you. <laughs> okay. I have said enough. I'm so grateful to you for being here and for listening. Um, you can find me at danadomorrow.com. And again, if you're here in town um, Monday, please join us at Alila. It's such a beautiful, beautiful uh, energy sitting there uh, under the, the sky and playing the bulls. Hope you can make it. All right, have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Take care. Bye-bye.